Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and we're taking a look at the World 3 skill, Worship. Worship's primary stats that we're going to take a look at are Worship Efficiency, your Charge Speed, and your current Maximum Charge. Worship Efficiency is just like every other skill and increases your rewards. It scales primarily from Wisdom and Worship Power. Charge Speed is based on a rate that you gain per day. However, it does accumulate every hour. And it is increased from more wisdom and other bonuses throughout the game, but more on that later. Your current charge is your pool of worship juice, so to speak, and you can increase this by equipping better skulls in your tools tab. To unlock worship, you do need to complete the first four quests from haagen here. Worship is broken down into two parts. The first major part is a tower defense style mini game, and then leveling the skill by collecting souls based on the highest wave completed in tower defense, as well as your worship efficiency. Worship is trained by going to one of these totems that are located throughout the game. The first totem is located in forest outskirts in world one and can be accessed at level one. The second totem is located in world two up, up, down, down, and can be accessed at level 10. The third totem is in World 1 again in the Roots map, and it can be accessed at level 30. The fourth totem is in the Rolling Tundra here and can be accessed at level 45. There is a fifth totem being added in World 4, however, it is unavailable at the time of recording this. When you click on a totem, you get this menu that pops up. It shows you the current totem the best wave you've ever completed, how many souls, and how much XP you'll gain from each time you click the worship button. In the middle here, you have your current charge, and after the slash, it shows you the cost every time you click one of these buttons. On the left, you have the summon button that summons the tower defense mini game, and the worship button is a instant way to spend your charge to gain XP and souls. You don't have to complete the mini game. Each time you click either of these buttons, it will spend your charge though, so be careful. So let's take a look at the tower defense section first. And after you've completed the quest from haagen you've already unlocked access to your first tower. And if we look in the construction bench on the second line, you can see all of the towers that are currently available. And the initial level allows you to use the tower in tower defense, but each subsequent level increases the damage of that tower and also lowers the cost to upgrade the tower during the worship tower defense mini game. So each tower going from the pulse mage, pulse mage is a single target with high attack speed, but relatively low damage. The fireball lobber tower shoots exploding fireballs and hits multiple enemies in a small radius. It attacks a little bit slower, but does have more damage. The boulder roller is one of your highest damaging towers. It hits multiple enemies, but it attacks very slow. It sends a boulder rolling down the lane and hits multiple enemies that way. Next is your frozen Malone tower, and it casts a freezing wave and it slows all enemies that it hits. It can stack with other frozen towers, but it does cast relatively slower and does no damage. The next is your Stormcaller Tower. This is a single target tower that has the highest single target damage, but it attacks super slow. Next is your Party Starter. This is a buff tower. It does no damage and it has no other function until the tower reaches level five. More on that later and we'll go over the bonuses then. Lastly is your Kraken Cosplay Tower, and this summons eyeball defenders that knock back enemies. It does summon them fairly slow, but it just keeps monsters back towards your other towers so they can deal more damage. So that's it for the towers for now. So let's take a look at the actual minigame and what it looks like. When you click on the summon, you'll see something like this. It summons a portal here and the enemies will start making its way down the lane. It walks all the way down this platform, drops down to the bottom and then makes it way, its way back to the totem. All right, so taking a look at all the information here, we're starting at the top left here with the wave. It shows the current wave that you're on, and below that it shows you how many seconds until the next wave starts spawning. Next, you have your heart pool, and this shows you how much HP you have. You always start with five HP for each minigame, and you lose an HP every time a monster reaches the totem. 
When the monster reaches the totem, it is sent back to the portal and it restarts its path. However, it does not regenerate its HP. Next is the points. The points are the currency for the minigame, and they're gained every time you kill a monster and at the completion of each wave. They are also used by summoning a new tower or upgrading existing towers on your map. Next is this wave and next wave. It shows you how many enemies are currently left, as well as how much HP each enemy has. Same thing for the next wave. From there, we're gonna take a look at the buttons and the next wave button here summons the next wave instantly and awards you with some bonus points. On the right side, you have the new button. That's what opens this box here, which shows you which towers you currently can summon. Every time you summon a tower, it will increase the cost of all subsequent towers, even if it's a different type. Next is the trash button, and this lets you delete towers that are currently on the map. And lastly is the forfeit button, and this lets you end the tower defense minigame early. You do get rewarded based on your current level when you forfeit, though. All right, so let's summon a wave now and see how it looks in action. And we can summon a few towers here by clicking and dragging. Summon a few of them just so we don't die too quickly. And we can now click on a tower. The enemies are coming. And when we click on the tower, we see the current damage it deals as well as what it upgrades to next, the attack speed of the tower, and the star shows you which upgrade path you have previously selected. On the right hand side, it shows you the current level of the tower, how many points it costs to upgrade. And then when you upgrade to level five, you get to select a path. Each tower has two paths. So let's go over those next. So the available upgrades for each tower are the Pulse Mage has a chance to multi-hit, or it can add a pushback to non-boss monsters. The Fireball Lobber has a chance to throw multiple fireballs, or it can increase the explosion radius of each fireball. The Boulder Roller Tower has boulders travel 30% farther, or boulders can hit two more enemies. Frozen Malone has freezing effects slow enemies more, or monsters stay frozen two seconds longer. The Storm Collar Tower has additional damage to enemies below 50% HP, or all towers in its range gain 5% crit chance. The Party Starter Tower is the odd one. It does not do anything until a path is selected. The paths are other towers in its range get 25% more attack speed, or monsters killed in its range give 10% more points. The Kraken Cosplayer has plus one more max underling, or underlings push mobs back 25% farther. The next thing to talk about are the enemies. And there are four types of enemies that have different speeds and health amounts. And there's also six colors that enemies can be. The colors give them a special buff. The enemy types are Zumo that have high speed but low health. They're the little gray guys that we've seen before. The Normos look kind of like this and they're the basic monsters that have average speed and average health. The Largos are a little bit larger and have low speed but high health. On the screen now we can see the Gigos that are basically boss mobs. They only spawn in the boss waves, but they have very low speed and very high health. The colors that mobs can spawn in are gray and they're the normal average mob. The green heals continuously when they get below 50% HP. The red monsters, or they look slightly pink to me, but they apply a healing buff to all nearby monsters when they're killed. The blue monsters go invincible for a short time after taking five hits from any source. The orange monsters explode on death, stunning all nearby towers for a short time. And there are purple monsters as well that teleport every time they are hit. The last thing to mention when you're fighting in tower defense is it's recommended to use a hunter or maestro. While the wizard gets the most buffs to worship, being a wizard during the minigame does not impact your highest wave or your rewards from the minigame. In the minigame, each attack from your character will only do one damage, no matter what your gear, talents, or other stats are. So what we need most is crowd control to help the enemies. And the Maestro has its Indiana attack that hits multiple enemies or pulls them back towards your character. The Hunter also has stop right there that summons bear traps and roots all enemies in place. The higher level and the skill, the longer the root lasts. It also has the Kung Fu kick that's a knockback as well. 
it is worth mentioning the wizard does have some crowd control in the form of ice shards, but it's just lackluster in comparison with a hunter or maestro for the mini game. So that's it for the tower defense section. And we're going to take a look at increasing your stats now for more gains when you click the worship button. So the wizard is the only character that gets direct benefits to worship from its talents. Uh, worship efficiency also scales directly from wisdom as well. And worship efficiency and highest maximum wave completed in tower defense are calculated together to tell you how much XP and how many souls you'll gain from clicking this worship button here. So let's take a look at equipment first. And in equipment, the primary page for your gear, you only really care about how much wisdom you can gain from each of these pieces of gear. In the tools, the only thing that matters is your skull, and this gives you more worship power, and it also increases your maximum charge here. In the foods tab, the only food worth mentioning is the sobel gum, and it increases your soul gain, but it is consumed pretty much every time you worship, uh, so make sure you're using any talents or buffs that can reduce your consumption of this. So on to your talents next, and we're going to take a look at tab three first, and your priority is going to be the souls that increases your worship efficiency based on how many forest souls are currently in your storage chest. From here, charge siphon is nice because it allows you to steal your charge from your other characters, and it gives you a maximum charge buff for one minute. So all that bonus charge saved up on all your characters can be used quite easily. Next, I usually avoid Bless Up as I don't want to outlevel my Maestro. And from there, Nearby Outlet does increase your charge rate, but be careful, this has to be an active talent for it to work, so it doesn't work if it's on a secondary preset. From here, Wiz Wombo increases your maximum talent level of Book of the Wise. Your statue actually does not affect worship, so don't be fooled there. And from here, Occult Obols gives you more wisdom from your Obols. On tab two, we start with Individual Insight for more wisdom. The Untwisted Robes gives you more wisdom from your equipment. And then Free Meal is nice to benefit to your souls. Everything else on the page is extras. For tab one, we're looking at the Smart Efficiency for more efficiency on your worship. And Book of the Wise for more base wisdom. Everything else here is also extra. On your Star Talent tab, your priority is going to be Super Source for more base efficiency. The toilet paper postage stamp gives you more skill efficiency. And then Will of the Eldest is nice for more base stats. AFK gain rates don't really affect anything in worship. So Frosty Mock is the last thing for more higher bonuses to your foods for that Sobel gum. So next we're going to be taking a look at cards. And your card should look something like this. Your Dune Soul gives you more starting points in your worship also your rooted soul down here gives you more starting worship points your frigid soul increases your maximum charge rate and then your penguin walking sticks and jungle slime give you more base wisdom and your crab cakes are also good for reducing food consumption sir stash here is a personal choice to help increase the rate that i gain cards so i can finish out my worship cards in the card sets, make sure you're using the easy resources for more skill efficiency. And on to post office next. For the post office, you want to look at the second upgrade tab for the Crate of the Creator. This can increase your worship efficiency by 30%. At 25 boxes, you start gaining max charge up to 130%. At 100 boxes, you start gaining more starting worship points up to 54 points. Next, looking at obols, you have two tabs here. The personal tab, I usually fill up with anything that gives me more worship power or more wisdom. Even these chopping things can give you more wisdom. In the family tab, they are shared between all of your characters. So it can be a nice bump, but be smart about how you're using these. Next, we're taking a look at alchemy, and we want to take a look at gospel leader for more maximum charge rate. And then at the bottom, Having Stable Genius gives you more base wisdom. The Mage is Best multiplies all of the passive bonuses from the small purple bubbles. And then lastly, we're taking a look at Call Me Pope, which is a large bubble and must be equipped in this right-hand side here, but it increases your worship charge rate. 
in the vials section, you can look at the crab juice vial and it gives you more starting points in your worship tower defense. And next would be your stamps. And we're gonna take a look at the very bottom here. The banked point stamps gives you 24 more starting points for worship tower defense. This is for me, you can get more or less. The flowing stamp increases your charge rate per hour and it is a multiplier. And then in the combat side, you do have the book stamp for more base wisdom and the arcane stamp also gives you more wisdom. So on to statues, there's only two that affect us and that would be at the very bottom. The two souls gives you more worship power and the feasty statue gives you more food effect to help multiply that sobel gum. Don't forget to pick up your golden statues as this does make your statues account wide. If you're in a guild, you can get a few nice bonuses, such as the multi-tool gives you more total skill efficiency, the stat runes gives you more base stats, and it is worth mentioning star dazzle for lower level players as you can get more star talent points. Also in World 3, you can take a look at the Salt Lick on page 2, and you can get more points from Worship's Tower Defense from Killing Monsters. Another thing worth mentioning is in the World 3 Achievements, you can get more starting points from Worship Tower Defense by completing the Fat Souls Achievement. For the last major increase to Worship Efficiency, we're taking a look at the Prayer Obelisk. The Prayer Obelisk is also a major reward that you gain from worship other than collecting souls. Prayers are collected by completing higher waves in each of the different tower defenses. Starting from completing wave 10 of the Forest Outskirts Tower, you get big brain time, and each of the different tiers can unlock more prayers for you, such as looking at here for the next prayer, we need to reach wave 81 of the Goblin Go Gore Fest Worship Totem that we saw in World 1. And each of these prayers comes with a major benefit as well as a curse that has a penalty for you. Each prayer can also be upgraded by spending different types and amounts of souls, such as here we need forest souls, and each level increases the benefit, but it also increases the penalty from the curse. For skill efficiency uh, for worship, we're looking at skill dimwit here, and it increases your base skill efficiency by 30% at level one, but it does come with a penalty of minus 30% to all skill XP gain. This can be upgraded again by using four souls, and you can see the bonuses get quite high. One last note to mention before we go, worship is very easy to level on alternate characters as the largest increase to EXP is usually from the highest wave completed. Simply spending each character's charge at the totem that gives the most EXP can easily get you 30 to 40 levels. Higher levels means that you can use better skulls on that character for more maximum charge. And then the maximum charge can be stolen using the wizard's charge siphon. Also, you gain talent points for each level in worship that you gain on each character. This has been Ice Locked with Nocturne Gaming, and this is my ultimate worship guide. If you want to see more of this type of content, liking and or subscribing will allow us to devote more time and energy on creating content. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.